I would have a word with your people in the lab. That thing out there, that's no dinosaur. Sixty-five is a new upcoming dinosaur movie? Yeah, I, I guess. I guess that's a dinosaur? It's exciting to get more dinosaur content to fill the T-Rex-shaped hole in our lives after the release of Jurassic World Dominion and with no new Jurassic movies on the horizon at the moment. And beggars can't be choosers. But at the moment, there's a lot about this movie that makes me go... Eh? Don't worry, Ian. I'm not making the same mistakes again. No, you're making... You're making all new ones. This video is all just my opinion based on two movie trailers, which we know can be deceptive, so keep all of that in mind. Before we zoom in on some of the red flags, I want to talk about the things that make me cautiously optimistic and that will have me going to see this movie with an open mind. The screenplay for 65 comes from the writers who brought us A Quiet Place. If you haven't seen that movie, be warned that I will be spoiling some aspects of it. A Quiet Place was about a post-apocalyptic world where humans have been all but exterminated by an alien species that hunts based on sound, forcing the family that the movie follows to live in almost complete silence. It was an unexpected but well-deserved hit. I have not personally seen the sequel, but the original was very suspenseful, innovative, and well-crafted. If they can reproduce that for 65, then we are potentially in for a real treat. What made A Quiet Place so effective at making me fear the aliens is that character mistakes, as in making sound, had real consequences. Those consequences being character deaths. A Quiet Place did not shy away from killing one of the main protagonists and even opened the movie with the death of a little kid. In the hands of these writers, neither of the two characters in 65 are safe. I do have my suspicions on whether a character will die or not and which of the two it will be, which I'll talk about later in this video. In A Quiet Place, the characters have to communicate through sign language because they have to be absolutely quiet when they are out in the world. As a result, there is very little spoken dialogue in the movie, but it's done very well. It seems like the writers are already taking a page from their own book by also putting a spin on the communication between Driver and the girl. There appears to be some sort of communication issue here, possibly a language barrier, since Driver's character is called Mills, assuming that's his last name, that's a very common English name, whereas the plot synopsis says the girl's name is Koa, which is not a typically English name, so perhaps she's of a different ethnicity and doesn't speak English. In the trailer, we get hints that they communicate through gestures, drawings, and very simple single words. When Driver says we need to be quiet and move, he seems to be miming it out for her. We see him making a gesture related to move, while she is doing the signal for quiet, possibly mirroring him doing that just before the trailer cut to that scene. So I think Driver's character has to teach her how to communicate with him over the course of the film. It looks like this film too will not have a lot lot of spoken dialogue, instead relying on Driver narrating as he's talking for a log or something, or maybe even able to communicate with people from where they came from. That could be off-putting for a lot of people, but again it was handled well in A Quiet Place, so at the moment all I think of it is that it's interesting and different. The writers are solid, the writers are very promising. Another promising aspect is the casting of Adam Driver. The dude can act. I'm not exaggerating when I say that he's the only part of the Star Wars sequel trilogy that I really liked, but he's even better in other films he's done. In a movie that appears to have only two characters for us as viewers to watch and to relate to, it's a good choice to make at least one of those portrayed by a highly skilled actor like Adam Driver. This is not a diss towards the actress who plays the girl, I'm assuming she's great until proven otherwise, I just haven't seen her in anything yet. The final positive is something I already touched on. It's exciting to get more dinosaur movies outside of the Jurassic franchise. We want the genre to thrive even as Jurassic movies are now on a back burner, and 65 is obviously taking the genre in a very different direction. Even if the movie ends up being bad, like actually sucking, I still kind of want it to do well financially, just so we leave that door open for future non-Jurassic dinosaur movies. I don't want other movie makers to watch 65 fail and then think to themselves, 
All right, we're not gonna try that again. It just doesn't work without the Jurassic license. Editing Evo would like to insert that so far, there's no reason to think the movie will suck. It's made some creative choices that I don't agree with and that I'll talk about in the rest of this video, but it can still be a good movie. The whole thing is promising in concept, in theory, but I can't sit here and wax poetic about it, not yet at least. If the movie blows me away, I will, and of course I'll go and see it as soon as it comes out and do a review for you guys. But for now, I want to talk about some... some concerns. Some red flags, if you will. Let's rewind a little bit. And 65 is obviously taking the genre in a very different direction. Is it though? Sure, it's introducing spaceships and maybe even time travel, we'll talk about that in a minute. But to dinosaur fans like myself, it's instantly noticeable that 65 is doing something very similarly to the Jurassic franchise, namely the inaccurate dinosaurs. Jurassic Park did all right with its dinosaur portrayal in 1993, but now we're almost exactly 30 years later and paleontologists have not been sitting still this time, and it's become very apparent that the depictions of dinosaurs in the Jurassic franchise are not really representative of scientific discoveries. Personally, I have always given the Jurassic movies a pass for this, and I will stand by that. They went with a certain dinosaur look in 1993, which was fairly accurate for the time, and then as sequels came out, I understand that they stuck with that aesthetic, even though it was disproven. They've established what dinosaurs look like in their movie universe, and while they could have evolved with the times, and they did a little bit, especially with Dominion, I disagree that they had to do that, and that it was a mistake that they didn't. And they even give us an explanation for the differences by throwing in a line from Wu in Jurassic World. Nothing in Jurassic World is natural. If their genetic code was pure, many of them would look quite different, but you didn't ask for reality, you asked for more tea. I never asked for a monster. 65 though does not get the same leniency because it doesn't get the excuse of this is what we thought dinosaurs pretty much looked like at the time of coming up with our universe because the time in question is 2020. That's when they started working on this movie. The time is when we know better. The time is when we have a very different understanding of what dinosaurs looked like. I would have applauded the movie for embracing that, breaking away from the old school jurassic fied look of dinosaurs and giving us something scientifically accurate and showing that that can still be awesome and scary. Instead, this is the feathered or fluffy dinosaur that we're getting, and the big bad villain dinosaur is straight up a Dr. Wu hybrid, mixing Indominus Rex and Indoraptor with Phastatosaurus Rex from Peter Jackson's King Kong. And I named Indoraptor as one of the genetic sources because look at the spine here. It definitely looks like this dinosaur is putting weight on the front limbs and walking on all fours, and in this brief shot, it almost kind of looks like it might be galloping instead of running bipedally. In my opinion, the dinosaur designs are just a weird and disappointing choice. I would have much preferred them to go in a different direction with it and really take that freedom, being its own thing, its own universe, its own license, and taking that freedom and using it to bring us scientifically accurate dinosaurs. And after seeing the first trailer, I thought, okay, but it looks like the character is stranded on another planet, similar to Earth, but not Earth. And the creatures aren't actually dinosaurs, they are aliens that somewhat resemble dinosaurs. But the second trailer and the plot synopsis really makes it clear that the movie takes place on Earth 65 million years ago. They aren't aliens, they aren't theme park monsters engineered to look a certain way, they are really supposed to be actual dinosaurs. And it's a weird diss for this movie to say real dinosaurs weren't cool enough, so we're giving them the Vestato treatment. Editing Evo Part 2 Electric Boogaloo. I would like to say that I'm sure the movie will give some convoluted reason as to why the dinosaurs don't look like real dinosaurs. I don't think they're gonna leave it unsaid. But if they had just portrayed dinosaurs as they actually were, they wouldn't need to come up with an explanation. They manufactured this weird situation where they have some explaining to do instead of just giving us cool, real dinosaurs. It brings me to my second red flag. Is this movie really about to say that humans aren't indigenous to Earth? That the two human characters are, in a way, aliens themselves? 
Is this an alternate universe where humans never became a thing on Earth? Or is this going to give us a retelling of the events that led to the extinction of the dinosaurs 65 million years ago, saying it wasn't a meteor or anything else, but that it was these two humans or something else related to the events of the movie? And then later on, an indigenous race of humans evolved on planet Earth? I don't know, it all sounds very crazy and convoluted, and it sounds too ambitious for what otherwise looks to be an action-packed dinosaur flick. I worry that this twist is going to overcomplicate the plot, or at least the concept, and it's just going to be this weird thing that hangs over the movie, either without real purpose or without a proper execution. The plot synopsis, however, implies something very different. After a catastrophic crash on an unknown planet, Pilot Mills, Adam Driver, quickly discovers he's actually stranded on Earth 65 million years ago. Now with only one chance at rescue, Mills and the only other survivor, Koa, Ariana Greenblatt, must make their way across an unknown terrain riddled with dangerous prehistoric creatures in an epic fight to survive. The way this is phrased doesn't seem to fit with humans discovered Earth. He didn't discover Earth, he just ended up there. Humans discovered Earth implies just space travel. These human beings, supposedly Adam Driver and the, the girl, they end up on Earth. In what is for them their current time, it just happens to be 65 million years ago for Earth. So they're like from this advanced civilization that was already at the point of space travel 65 million years ago. But the synopsis goes in a different direction. The synopsis hints at time travel getting thrown into the mix as well. Where Adam Driver and the girl didn't just travel to a planet, they also accidentally went back in time 65 million years. Either way, it really is Earth 65 million years ago. They can do with that whatever they want, but the one thing that they shouldn't have done, in my opinion, is make these monster dinosaurs. My personal red flag for the movie is that there are only two characters. I'm not usually a fan of that, especially not in action-packed movies where I want to see some death. In my dinosaur movies, I want to see people get picked off. I don't want to see a full movie of narrow escapes where they get away every time. Because that is for sure what this movie is going to do. It's going to keep throwing threats at our characters throughout the runtime, putting them in impossible situations that by all accounts should kill them, and then have them be okay. For me, if you do that often enough over the course of a movie, it just loses the suspense, you become aware that your characters have this plot armor, at least until the end of the movie, and it takes away that immersive feeling that the characters are actually in danger. If there is going to be a character death, I don't think it'll be until the very end of the film. I don't see them killing off what looks like 50% of their cast before the finale. Now, even though the writers had no trouble killing a little kid in the opening of A Quiet Place, I don't expect them to kill the little girl here. The more screen time a child gets, the stronger the plot armor becomes. The remaining kids from A Quiet Place survived all the way through, and it was, sadly, their father who ended up dying through self-sacrifice to save his children. And I can see that happening in 65 as well. Driver's character clearly becomes very attached to the girl, and as a proper movie hero, he'll probably try whatever he can to save her, which might unfold with him also sacrificing himself in the end to get her on an escape pod and send her back to wherever they came from or were supposed to be going. But who knows, maybe they want to leave the door open so they can start their own dinosaur franchise, in which case killing off Driver would be... A very, what? very bad idea! What?! So we'll see what happens when the movie comes out. Let me know in a comment down below what you think of 65 so far and how you think the plot will play out. 65 premieres on March 17. If you plan on going, keep in mind that movies premiere on different dates in different countries, so look- Again, I will definitely be watching it and reviewing it. Thank you so much for watching, liking, subscribing, and until next time, fingers crossed. Thank <laughs> you.